Hello all, in this video I'm going to walk you through how to set up a uh, utility pass for your render sequence um, to get things like motion vectors and um, you know depth of field if you want depth of field and a crypto mat um, so you can mask out, uh, do masking and things like that. Um, now once you have your um, beauty pass rendered and it's denoised um, you obviously don't need a beauty pass anymore. Um, the problem is that you can't not render a beauty pass whenever you're rendering um, your AOVs. Um, so what we have to do basically is override a lot of our shaders and in order to make it just a really quick render. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do that. And we're going to do that with our render setup window. So you go to, you get your render setup window by going to uh, your rendering menu. Um, actually, it's not even in your rendering menu. If you go to um, Windows, Rendering Editors, Render Setup, you'll get this window. And basically what this window will allow us to do is add overrides um, so we can uh, get a really quick render without rendering all of our shaders and volumes and things like that and just get our utility passes. So uh, I'm going to start by jumping into my render settings here. And I'm going to go ahead and add everything that I could possibly need here. So um, the first thing that I'll do is I'll go into my, um, my motion blur and I want to turn motion blur on. Um, now in this case, I only have my camera moving in my sequence. Um, if you have objects deforming and shaders deforming, you may want to check those as well. Uh, but in this case, I only have my camera moving, so that's the only one I want on. And I want to make sure I have instantaneous shutter turned on. This will basically keep my other AOVs from rendering with a blur in them. Um, and it'll basically just uh, output a motion vector um, in order for me to get um, to, to add motion blur um, later on. Now uh, I'm going to go into my AOVs and I want to add everything that I could possibly need here. So um, I'm going to add my motion vector, which is here. I'm going to come down to the very bottom and add a crypto material and crypto object. And I just want to look to see if there's anything else I could possibly uh, need. Um, you know, ideally I might want my volume in a different, um, a different layer, but I would have wanted to do that in the other, uh, AOV, uh, when I denoised. Um, so I think I'm okay without it. Um, you can certainly add it here if you want, you just may have to do some things a bit differently. Um, and we'll use the noise and the Z depth, uh, all, that we have already. Um, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to just turn off my motion vector and my crypto mats. Now, it'll kind of make sense while we're doing this here in a second. All right, so we have those AOVs added. We have our motion blur turned on um, with instantaneous shutter and uh, just our camera checked here. So the next thing I'm going to do here is mostly in my render, um, my render setup window and my hypershade. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my hypershade as well. This is my render setup window. And this will basically just make it a bit easier to select things. I also want to make sure I have my outliner selected. And I'm going to add a new uh, render layer. So I'm going to click that guy and add a new render layer. And I'm just going to name this render layer utility pass. All right, and the way this works basically is we need to add collections. So um, if I currently just select this eyeball here, um, everything will disappear from my scene. Um, and that's because there's nothing currently in this, in this uh, render layer. So um, I'm gonna select all of my objects here, or first I'm gonna add a collection. So I'm gonna right click and say create collection and I can call this uh, collect collection objects. And I wanna add all of my objects to my collection. So I'm gonna go through and just select everything that I have here in my uh, outliner and say add. 
And now I want to look through this and uh, there may be some things that I need to remove. So like my, uh, my mash objects here, you see that they're grayed out. So I want to go ahead and just remove those because they don't really work in this uh, collection. Okay, so now I have all of my objects in my scene. Um, now what I want to do is add a global override to all of my objects in the scene. So I'm going to do that just by going to any one of my objects. So in this case, I'll just do the ground um, and I'm going to go look at it in my attribute editor. And I want to look at the, um, I want to actually look at the material, not the object. So I want to add another collection of just my materials. So I'm going to right click, create collection, and I'll call this one materials or shaders. Either one works. And I want to set this to shaders. Okay. And now in my hyper shade, I'm just going to select all of my shaders. Now, if you have a bunch of shaders in here, you may have some that you're not using. Um, a good idea is always to go to uh, edit, um, delete unused nodes, and that will get rid of any shaders that are not being used. All right. So I'm just going to select all of my shaders and add those. And just again, remove any that um, aren't really serving a purpose. And now any one of these shaders, I want to select them and I'm going to come down to um, see, it might be in my Arnold tab here and I'm going to go to Matt. And um, you can, you can do this two different ways. You can either middle mouse click and just drag this into your um, this here. And that will create an absolute override, meaning that it's going to apply this to every shader in your render layer. So it's going to apply this to all of our shaders. And I also want to uh, drag in my matte color. So if I just right click and say um, create absolute override, that will turn orange as well. So then I'm just going to check that enable matte. And I'm going to make my color white. And this will essentially apply this to every uh, material in our scene. Um, so we can just double check that just by clicking on any of our materials here and just making sure that those settings are in there. Now, if I go back to my render setup and I select the eyeball for my master layer, which is up here, you'll see that that gets disconnected. So this isn't going to render, this isn't going to affect my master layer. This is only going to affect this, um, this utility pass that we're working on here. Now with all those selected with that uh, override applied to my scene, if I open up my render view here and I do a render, Oops, I already had it open. If I open up my render view here and I do a render for this, um, this layer, it's going to render really fast. So there we go. We'll go ahead and cancel that. So it's not rendering that fast yet. And that's because my volume is still in our scene. So we need to create an override for, um, for our volume. So uh, what we need to do for that is just turn that off in our render settings. So we need to create an override for our render settings. So I'm going to create this. Um, I'm going to take this render settings here and just drag this down into my utility pass. And that will create a render setting here. And then I'm going to open up my render settings. 
and I'm going to go to the environment where our atmospheric volume is. I'm going to right click that and I'm going to say uh, connect, create a connection override for visible layer. And that will disconnect that and turn that orange so you can see that that is a layer override. So now when we render our scene, it should render very fast. So it takes a few seconds to kick in there, but we can see that that rendered in five seconds. Now we can get this to render even faster um, by adding, by getting rid of our lights or turning all of our lights off. So um, to do that, we're going to jump back into our render settings here, our render setup. And I'm going to add another collection for our lights. So um, I'm going to do create collection and I'll call this lights and go to uh, make sure that this is set to lights. And then once again, I can go into my Hypershade here and just go to my lights tab and wait for all my lights to load in. All right, and to turn all of my lights off, what I need to do is just go to my lights here and I'm just going to middle mouse click and drag that down into my utility pass. And then I have a lights here and I want to create a collection of lights. I also want to check uh, include all lights and, and renders by default. I want to make sure that's checked off, um, but I'm going to basically add all my lights to this uh, to this node here. So to do that, we can just go into my lights tab here in my uh, Hypershade to easily just drag and select all of my lights. And then just add those. And, uh, and now once those lights are added, we can come over here to our intensity and just add a um, absolute override for the visible layer. And we'll just bump that down to, um, to zero. Now I'm noticing here that I may have done this a bit wrong, but um, my collection, I have a collection of lights now. <laughs> So, um, and it's only did it for that one light. So I'm just going to go ahead and add all my other lights to this collection as well. And I just want to double check that that, uh, absolute override is applying to all of my lights in my scene. And it looks like it's not. So I'll just do that again to this collection. I can just uh, right click and say create absolute override and then just drop them all down to zero and you'll see all your lights go out. So you could probably achieve the same thing just by adding a collection rather than adding your lights here. And if now I do a, another render, it should render very quickly. So again, rendering about five seconds. So that's a pretty quick render. Um, and you can see if we click here and uh, to look at our other AOVs, you can see that we still have our normal, um, we still have our Z depth, uh, and we still have, we don't, the denoise albedo is all black because we're not really looking at anything. But um, now the last thing we wanna do here before we render this out is to turn on our other render passes in our render settings. So, um, I'm going to go to my render settings here and uh, let's open up our render settings. And I'm going to go to my AOVs and we can start turning things off and on here. So I can uh, right click and say create absolute override. So I want to leave my um, my in my normal on. I want to I can turn off my RGBA. So I'm going to create an absolute override for that and just turn it off. Um, I want to turn on my um, crypto material object and motion vector, and I can turn off my 
uh, albedo. So before I want to check those, I want to create an absolute override for them. Now these, it's a bit difficult because they don't turn orange so that we can see that change. But you just have to kind of trust the process here. All right, so now just let's do a double check here that we're gonna get everything rendered out. I'm gonna go somewhere into the middle of my render sequence here and render um, a still. So it's taking a bit longer since we have those other AOVs turned on, uh, but you can see that it's still a very quick render at seven seconds. And if we look at our crypto material, there is our crypto material, our crypto object, and our motion vector. So I'm just looking at my render sequence here. It looks like it crashed and my Arnold log says something about variance filter. Um, and this just reminds me that I forgot to do something. So um, I'm going to go to my render settings again make open up my render setup, go to my render settings, and I want to turn off output denoising AOVs. So I'm going to right click, create absolute override, and then just turn that off. And now our uh, sequence should render. And we can see that it is rendering. All right, so in the next uh, video, I'll talk about how to take this all into After Effects to make sure we have the right, uh, the correct color profile for our viewing our uh, images and how to start compositing all this stuff together.